All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Another breakdown coming at you guys. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric, and I'm on a mission to make sure this MCAT is as easy as possible for you guys. Easy. That's right, I said easy. Because a lot of you guys like to believe that the MCAT is this crazy, hard, impossible test, when it's really not. Okay, it's easy when you know what to do, when you're doing the right things. So I'm going to go ahead and break this passage down, show you guys where to highlight, how to read, how to make all these details make sense. I'm going to show you guys how to pick the best answer choice as well. So before I do that, you guys do this on your own first. Okay, I'm going to scroll down, pause whenever you need to, go through this passage, okay, and answer these questions on your own first. So this is the first question, second question, third question, fourth question. All right, and don't worry about this. This was by accident. I clicked on it when I was going through the questions. All right, so I'm going to break this down right now. Sip on the water. All right, let's do this. If vesicles are deformed while being transported through the body, vesicle membranes exhibit a tank treating motion. All right, I'm highlighting this because I have no idea what the heck that is. During movement, a force capable of lifting these non-spherical buoyant vesicles away from the substrate may result. Okay, so what is this motion? Well, we have these buoyant vesicles going away from the substrate. Buoyant vesicles away, substrate. That's what happens. To understand the role vesicles may have in heart disease, researchers designate designed I'm sorry synthetic lipid vesicles to mimic erythrocytes and subjected them to shear flow shear flow close to a vessel wall all right the aim was to study the effect of vesicle buoyancy size and volume so that was the aim they wanted to study the vesicle buoyancy size and volume i highlight what's important and i highlight what sticks out at me and this is the things that stick out at me the reason the point of highlighting is to kind of zone in on these details and make sure that you remember them and also understand them all right uni lamellar vesicles were prepared by electroformation one two diallel sn glycerol three phosphocholine was dissolved in a chloroform slash methanol solution the solution was then spread on the conductive conductive faces of two glass plates coated with transparent indium ito so this is where it was spread on this thing that it was spread on had properties the properties was that it was conductive it was glass and it was coated with ito the plates were connected to a 10 hertz alternating current and the resulting 1.5 volt potential difference was maintained between the plates for three hours all right information details you can highlight if you want um but i I, you could highlight it if you want. That, this part isn't important to highlight because you could just always go back to it right away. Like you see these numbers, they stick out at you. So if you need to do any calculations, bam, right there in case. Concentrations of solution were altered to cause density variations. Finally, the vesicles were diluted in a glucose solution of higher osmolality, all right, but lower buoyancy. Osmosis produced partially deflated, flaccid, deformable objects. Vesicles settled on the substrate, and their buoyancy was controlled and varied. Figure 1 shows partial results and data for selected vesicles. If you don't look at the figures, only look at the figures when the question asks for it. Deflated vesicles detach and lift off from the substrate when the wall shear rate is higher than a minimum value GC. Okay, so they detach when the shear rate higher GC. Cool. This minimum depends on the viscosity, the density difference between the vesicles in solution, delta rho, and vesicle radius, capital R. When the vesicles are unbound from the substrate, they hover at a distance from the wall, which increases upon increasing the shear rate at a D value sufficient to establish the equilibrium. There is a hydro hydrodynamic lift force which is equal to the apparent weight of the vesicle. Okay, these letters, I don't really have to highlight. I can just go back to it right away. Okay, it's all very, very detailed information here, but I have a good understanding of what's going on here. They want to see what the heck is happening to this vesicle, all right? And then here's the 
uh, parameters, information they gave us. Okay, cool. What is the lift force for the vesicle reported in table one that would be the last to detach from the vascular wall? All right, what is the lift force? All right, well, I know force needs newtons. Okay, so I can get rid of these. I'm gonna strike through these. All right, force, all forces are newtons or some type of uh, variant of newtons, okay? Pascals and meters, that's that's not a force. You don't have a force there. PN, is it a high PN or is it a low PN? The last to detach from the vascular wall. Well, if I use my common sense here, okay, I would need a stronger force to detach the vesicle that's stuck to the wall, all right? The vesicle that's stuck to the wall, that one that's not coming off, I'm gonna have to increase my force, increase my force, increase my force to take that damn vesicle that's stuck to the wall and won't come out. I gotta get stronger force, take it out. I can't use this weak force, okay? So because of that, these two answers are very far apart. It's either very, very weak force or very, very strong force, and I'm gonna go with the strong force. Okay. Also, it's those right here where I highlighted that the wall shear rate is higher than a minimum value GC. Okay, that's how we get detachment. We need a high, higher than minimum value GC. All right, and the GC. Oh, and here's the GC here. Okay. So the PN 153 is greater than the GC. All right, here. PN is lower than the GC. We need a higher GC. So 153 also makes sense from there. Very, very supported answer. I'm pretty sure I could bet all my money on that this is correct, okay? According to the results presented by the experiment, the relationship between the lift force and the vesicle radius would best be described as linear. Okay, this is pretty easy. All right, so the vesicle radius is the R, and then the lift force, it was a PN, right? Is that what they told us last? Yeah, lift force was PN, okay. Radius, PN, okay, 8.7, 0.2, then it becomes 20, and this becomes 4.7. Okay, that's already exponential, I can already tell. All right, yeah, look, 6.8 to 13.4, they're been increasing, look how it's increasing, 0 0.2, 4.7, 6.8, 13, 29, it's at 153, 153 out of nowhere, okay? So it increased exponentially. And this also as well, because this increases, this increases as well. All right. If it was linear, it would be like 2, 4, 6, 8, and this would be like uh, 6, 8, 10, 12. Inverse, one up, one down, which is completely wrong. This goes up, and this goes up, this goes up, this goes up. Exponential is the best answer, and sigmoidal, this is not sigmoidal. If it was sigmoidal, you'd see like something tapering off. Okay, remember, sigmoidal is that S curve. So you would see like 23, 27, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35. That would be like sigmoidal, It'd be tapering off, okay? So the best answer is C. All right, very easy, guys. I don't know why you guys say that the MCAT is hard. Where is it hard? Where is the MCAT hard? I don't see it. Let's keep going. When the researchers connected the solution-filled glass plates of the flow chamber to the AC generator, okay, a lot of words here, the ITO code place most likely functioned as, okay, I forgot what it was, and it's okay if you forget it, just make sure you read it pretty quick, okay? I mean, I probably forgot because I'm talking to you guys, it kind of drifts my mind apart, but let me know if you guys remember this. So let's see, let me know if you remembered it when you were reading the passage, so where did they tell us? Um, here. So... Conductive, it's conductive. Okay, that gives me a lot of information there. Two plates. The plates were connected to a 10 hertz and the resulting 1.5 potential difference was maintained between the plates for three hours. So we have a potential difference on the plates and that potential difference is maintained for three hours. That is telling me that we're storing charge there because we're storing it for a whole three hours. So we're storing charge very good. Something that stores charge is a capacitor, not a resistor, capacitor, galvanic cell, electrolytic cell. No, it wouldn't be these. Okay, these involve more chemistry in there. Okay, There's, if they had like lead and all that, then this would make sense, but they don't. So I'm gonna go with B.
According to the experimental procedure, which of the following describes the physical properties of indium tin oxide? All right, they told us here. What is it? Um, the solution was then spread on the conductive. So it's conductive. So obviously it's electrically conducting. Two has to be it. Anything that doesn't have two is wrong. So three is wrong. Then one and three is wrong. Okay. It's conductive. Glass plates coated with ITO. Oh, coated with transparent indium. Okay, it's transparent, so it's obviously not <clears throat> opaque. All right. So it is not opaque. It's electrically conducting. So two only. That's it. It's conducting and it's, it's transparent. It's not opaque. Who says solid at room temperature? Let's see. Hmm. Solid at room temperature. I guess so. I mean, they're plates. So, yeah, they would be solid at room temperature. I don't see why they would be a liquid. They're plates. They're hard. They're solid. Okay, so the answer for this one, I'm going to go with D here. I'm not really quite sure, but I think it's D. I'm pretty sure it's D. We're going to check right now. Is that the last of it? Yes, that is. So let's check if we got everything right here. Okay. So here we have um, 54 was exponential. 55 was capacitor. 56 was D. Okay, correct. It is solid. It makes sense that it's solid. And here's the explanation, guys, if you would like to look at it. Yep, that was it. Easy, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button. Comment down below any questions you guys have. I'll be sure to answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Good luck on your studying. MCAT is easy. Peace out.